Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is session 4, part 5 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing the operation of God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, introducing facts about the laws of compensation or the analogy of reaping what is sown, and how compensation drives forgiveness and repentance. This session was recorded on 19th of September 2017 from 10.50 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Compensation and the passing of time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, from what we've seen so far in the discussion, mm -hmm. uh, there's, it's evident that there's sometimes a, a seemingly a time delay between when we sow a deed or when our thoughts and actions and beliefs are occurring mm -hmm. and when we begin to feel or see the effects, the compensatory effects of that happening. Yes, yeah, so uh, you could say it's similar to a farmer when he farms in the, you know, winter in our case here, he might farm some, you know, put in some seed for some wheat. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's some time, the passing of time must occur before yeah. the harvest, you know, things have to grow. Th mm -hmm. Things are affected by all sorts of elements and the weather and, and water and all, th all these other things that all affect the growth of the wheat into into a seed head and then it's got to dry off ready to be harvest. Now in between the sowing and the reaping there might be two to three or four months of period of time in the case of a of a of a seed like a wheat seed or a barley seed. But when it comes to something like a fruit tree, mm -hmm. you might have you plant the seed and you, you might be talking like sort of anywhere from three to ten years time you might start to get some growth and in some cases it's even much longer than that. Mm -hmm. So so natural things do determine the how long the time needs to pass before you actually reap the consequences. So that you're speaking there, the natural laws. Yeah, really, there's natural that laws us. that yeah. govern us that, that determine that. And the same applies with any soul based sowing and reaping. So, so we need to understand that the passing of time is going to have an effect on, on compensation itself and, mm -hmm. and also have an effect on the things that we sow and how, how long a, in the future it may be that we reap the consequences of that. Mm. And others reap the consequences. Hey, it's, it's Correct, um, yeah. there's, a, there's a long harvest for some things that we do, sometimes thousands of years. There is. If you think about uh, with regard to parents with children, for example, you might, during the very formative years of the child, from the time the child is, is conceived right the way through to the time the child leaves home, it, you've, you've imposed a lot of different things onto the child emotionally and physically, a lot of laws, a lot of beliefs and all these other things. Now that child may reap the harvest of that for the rest of its life. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a part of what you sowed. So yeah. therefore that would be attributed to you. So you can see that and then that child may have another child and then that child may have another child and mm -hmm. so forth. And you might talk, you know, thousands of years of children uh, retain the emotion that you began. Yeah. So, so you could conceivably have still thousands of years time, mm -hmm. the people reaping what you sowed. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And then conversely, as we've already discussed a little bit today, there's other instances or there, there's, there's certain set of laws that operate that mean compensation is applied immediately to us. It's so so it's a, it's a big topic, isn't it? So yes. let's... Yeah, so the, the time passing could mean anything from instant, <laughs> instant right the way to thousands of years. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's ask some questions sure. about compensation and the passing of time. Sure. Yeah. The time delay between sowing and reaping. So here we want to know, is there always a passing of time before we reap compensation for what we sow, or to put it another way, before we experience the effects of our thoughts, our actions, our words, our desires, is there always a time delay bet between those things? So, Well, no, there's not always a time delay. There's a difference between our experience as well of a time delay and there being one. So that there's a whole lot of perception based mm -hmm. issues here. But, but the reality is when we have a thought or a word or an action that's out of harmony with love, in that moment we've, bro we've broken a law, mm -hmm. one of God's laws. And, and any time you break a law, there will be a corrective compensatory effect immediately imposed upon the soul. 
and also a, a compensatory effect to pay for the penalty of, of breaking the law. So, so that's imme that can be immediate. So, if, so for example, an, an example of an immediate one in the physical world would be jump off a building a few seconds later, hit the ground and you die. Mm -hmm. a and, and so there's the immediate compensatory effect of, of breaking the law of gravity, of, of yeah. exceeding the design of our body. Uh -huh. and, and that, that's an example of a physical one where there's very little time delay. Yeah. But then there's other things that are also imposed emotionally. So the instant you decided to jump off the building, mm -hmm. even while you're in flight, <laughs> if you yes. could say, if you could call it flight, because yeah. you're really just falling. <laughs> but um, even while you're in the air, before you've even died, yeah. your soul has had an immediate compensatory effect for the attempted suicide mm. right at that moment just be, even before the actual suicide has been completed. And, and really that's the compensation, isn't it? Because earlier in our discussion, you sort of said, well, well no, the, part of it, yeah. the landing is really more cause and effect. It's that's not right. even really compensation, that's but right. it's this well, other- It is compensation in the sense of, uh, but it, it is more like the amalgamation of the cause uh -huh. and effect and the law of compensation gotcha. together working. Yeah. Gotcha, yeah, yeah. yeah. As we discussed in one of the previous yeah. questions. Yeah. But so, so here we have a cause and effect is fall off, get off the building, the law of gravity is gonna, the effect is gonna be, if it's too high, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, but, but the soul-based conversation happens the immediate, immediately that you decided yep. to jump. Yeah. And actually decided to carry out the action. That's when the compensatory effect began on your soul. Mm -hmm. So, so remember we said that the compensatory effect is on your body, your spirit body and your soul. Yes. And so every one of those things has some measure of compensatory effect on it. And each one of those things has different uh they live in a different environment mm -hmm. and so therefore they have a different time frame associated with it everything <laughs> associated with the soul is instant yep. everything associated with spirit body is not instant mm. but, but it is it's faster than everything associated with physical body mm. things associated with the physical body may may take 80 90 100 years to come about um, depending upon what it is. So if you have a certain needy emotion uh, developed in your childhood, for example, you may get cancer from it when you're in your 60s. Yeah. And, and there's an example of a physical, a physical problem, the immediate soul damage occurring in the childhood, mm -hmm. but then that imposes the, on, on the physical, the cause and effect, if you like, of the damage on the soul, yep. imposes it on the physical body and on the spirit body. So now, those things take time to demonstrate the outcome of the choice that you made yeah. or the choice that somebody else made. And presumably, as you mentioned in our intro to this topic, um, if, if say I have the needy emotion, uh, it takes you know 50 years for the cancer to develop within me. In that period of time, I have a daughter who also has the needy emotion. Yes. Presumably, I develop cancer, I can pass from that cancer, can be in the spirit world, but my daughter now acting in that needy emotion that I didn't ever deal with. Probably will also have cancer. She, yes, or at, <laughs> at least be affecting other people with her needy projection. Of course. And I would still be reaping compensation even in the spirit world from that process continuing. Yes, presuming that you have not repented yeah. for your action. Which is again why this is relevant to our series, isn't yes. it? Yeah. So, so if there's no repentance or forgiveness, then of course you will continue to reap the compensatory effects uh, until there is repentance or forgiveness. And mm. this is why the compensation discussion is so important to the forgiveness and repentance discussion. Yes. Because you need to understand that unless you engage forgiveness and repentance, compensation is going to just grind away at you until something is complete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, just check our notes to make sure we've covered everything there. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Uh, perhaps I'll just read the summary. Um, that some compensatory effects are opposed immediately, as you've mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, and we spoke there about pain, but it's also pleasurable, isn't it? Of course. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about both compensation for the reward system yep. and compensation for the penalty or the correction system. And remember, the reward system, you can engage a lot of very loving behaviours that you may not immediately see the effect of right now. Mm. And, and in fact, on Earth, often you don't see the effect your entire life because the, the environment itself is geared towards, because of the attitude of the environment, the people around you, 
that's geared to oppose your positive improvements. Mm -hmm. so, so you may not see the full measure of all of the positive things that you've done while you're on Earth, but you'll certainly see them very quickly in the spirit world. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then we said some compensation, however, involves the effect of our will and desire upon others. Yes. And our environment, as well as ourselves in the physical form. Yep. And, and the spirit, spirit body form, form if and you like. Or the metaphysical form, if yes. you want to refer to it like that. Yep. And crucially, in our soul. Yeah. But the, this, this effect of our will and desire can, uh, sometimes takes time to, to become apparent. Yes. And, and it's like everything begins with a seed, but uh, it's like you don't really know the harvest of the seed until the seed is matured, do you? Yeah. Until it's gone through its growth cycle. Yeah. And this is a problem with many of our actions. We don't realise that they begin with a small decision, you know, just a small decision or a small action or a small piece of behaviour, but we don't understand the flow and effects of it and, and the effect it has on other people, on ourselves, on our soul, and therefore the decisions then we then make afterwards. Because yeah. each time any little decision we make in a negative sense or an unloving sense sets a foundation for another tiny decision to be made in, a, in an unloving direction. Mm -hmm. Whereas every tiny decision we make in a loving direction sets the foundation to, to leap from, from a new, you know, to make another tiny decision in a loving direction. Yes. And so we frequently don't understand the... Um, it's a compounding the effect, The compounding effect of each decision, if you like, and, and where they all began. And, and the law of compensation, of course, traces all of that. Mm. 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 Where we live affects the time delay between sowing and reaping. Yes. So does the time delay between sowing and reaping, compensatory effects, differ between what happens in the natural environment? So you've used the example of the physical crop of mm. wheat in the earth life. So while we have a, a physical body, mm -hmm. Um, and then between those two and the spirit world when we're now just in our spirit form. Yes, of, co of course that's the case. Each, each environment, um, I suppose you could say each lower environment is slower than the higher environment. Mm -hmm. so, so for example, everything at the soul level happens very rapidly and, and very quickly. You can think much more rapidly, you know, thousands of times more rapidly at the soul level than you can in your spirit body level even. And in your spirit body level, you can think a, a good thousand times more quickly than you can in a physical level. So, so everything is happening more rapidly. Everything is faster. And, and, but, but to you, because you are now thinking at that speed, everything looks to be slower at the lower level, if that makes sense. So, yeah. so if I'm at the soul level and I'm looking at the physical level, the physical look, level looks thousands of times slower than the soul level. And that being the case, anything you sow at the physical level may take thousands of times longer uh -huh. to actually come about yep. because everything happens in terms of the natural progress of sowing versus reaping. And therefore, there needs to be a cycle of growth in between yes. the sowing and the reaping. Everything begins with a seed, ends up with some kind of final product. And in between those two things, there may be many periods of time, you know, years, centuries even, or even millennia occur on Earth. Uh, in the spirit world, usually things happen much more rapidly. Mm -hmm. And so you get to see the effect more instantly of everything that you do. But it's not instant still. Mm -hmm. It's only instant at the soul level. Yes. And, and this is because of the way God's designed it is so that in you, when you do things in your physical level, you've got time to correct mistakes and time to adjust for things and, and things like that. And that's a natural. And if you think about it, that's a very good thing because that, that gives us... Um, we're not under stress going, oh, oh, under panic going, oh, if I make a mistake, it's going to be a disaster or something like yeah, that. So, yeah. so uh, some of us are. But <laughs> well, yeah, but, but that, that's a fear. That's yeah. not real. real. Yeah. You know, the reality is that God's given us plenty of time. If we make some kind of mistake, we can easily correct it and, and, and therefore do something about the fact that that everything and therefore not have the effect if you like of 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 the full effect of what we chose to do in, in initially mm -hmm. and we can always engage other higher laws which are the laws of forgiveness and repentance yeah which even can nullify some of the effects of yeah. course of compensation so but but 
we first need to understand with compensation that on Earth, everything is quite slowed down. You could say it's, it's like watching a slow mo mo motion movie when you're a spirit or, or, or in the soul world, when you look at the Earth. Everything is therefore more slow to come about in mm. terms of the compensatory effects. They take longer to measure. You can't see the full effects of every action that you take. Mm. And, and frequently, and, and if it's really a good thing that you're doing, yeah. uh, and, you know, positive things in harmony with love, because the world's environment is also usually anti-good at this stage, mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't always have to be in the future, but that how it, how, is how it is now. And that sort of makes it look like the good thing is going to be very slow to come about, you yeah. know. And so it may come about over centuries or millennia, the good things eventually. Yeah. And, and that's a natural consequence of the environment in which we're living, plus the fact that it's physical. And there's a whole lot of physical laws that determine how rapidly something can be wrecked well, after it has been sown. Yeah. Um, in the spirit world, obviously, the laws are much uh, they're acting more rapidly and more instantly. They're still not instant uh, like they are at the soul level, but, but there is a shorter time delay, a much shorter time delay between action mm -hmm. and the reaction of the law, the, yep. the compensatory reaping of, mm -hmm. of what you sowed. And, and so that feels to be much more like compressed in terms of time you you know see things happening much more rapidly yeah and in the soul world yes it's a, it is instant then that's what god's designed it to be so that everything you choose to do every desire that you have is instantly fulfilled mm -hmm. mm. so is it fair to say then for things like a uh, tree growing as opposed to me hitting my child mm -hmm. that the compensate because how does the compensatory effect um, differ there? Uh, well, you could say the tree growing is a natural consequence of the laws involving uh, the, gr the growth of, in, and genetics, yes. which are really the cause and effect controlling yes, the so tree's growth. Yes, it's not growth. really compensation. No, no, there is a compensation for the person who planted it, yes. if they planted it or, yeah. or cultivated or looked after it, obviously, yeah. because they are aiding the environment to grow. Yeah. And there is a positive compensatory reward upon the soul for doing that. Yeah. So, so you, one is a cause, a natural process of cause and effect based upon the the uh, genetic structure of the thing that has been sown. Mm -hmm. The other is the intention of the individual who sowed that particular thing and what yeah. they wanted as an outcome yeah. and whether that their desire was loving or not. Mm -hmm. right? So let's say somebody, instead of sowing a tree that assists the environment and helps all the animals and the birds in the environment and so forth, let's say they decided to sow a tree just to cut down trees. So, yeah. so for example, for paper mill or for... Yeah has no other positive effect on the environment. In fact, it can do a lot of destruction to the environment. And in particular, depending on the type of tree that's chosen, mm -hmm. it creates a monoculture in an area, which may, means it's going to create a monoculture of insects and other other creatures which sustain the environment. And and there are very negative effects of doing that, obviously, yeah. that, that mankind is just starting to understand. Mm -hmm. And now the intention of the individual is still a part of that process. Yeah. These are all natural processes where you plant a seed still or plant a small tree and it grows to be a giant that you eventually cut down and, and paper pulp, pulp meal or, yes. or something like that. But, but the intention of the individual is still present in mm -hmm. that action. Mm -hmm. And so the intention of the individual is what is going to be affected by compensation. Because remember, compensation applies to the human soul. It doesn't apply to trees and matter. It applies to the intentions that the human soul in, in, engaged in. So in your example of the tree, yes, planting a tree, depending on what kind of tree and where you're planting it and what you're intending to do with it, demonstrates an intention. Yeah. And that intention is measured by the law of compensation. Mm -hmm. When it comes to uh, dealing with a child, yeah. obviously now we're having the effect of one human on another. Yes. And that is going to be a much more strong uh, a compensatory effect. A positive intention will obviously have a stronger compensation in a, in, a, in a positive rewarding way and a negative intention. So in other words, if you want to harm the child, you want to hit the child or abuse the child or, you know, um, assault the child, these kind of things will have a very strong negative effect compared to cutting down a tree, for mm -hmm. example. 
uh, cutting down a tree, obviously, ha if you do it en masse, that has a huge effect on the population. But if you do it, just one tree or a few trees or just in a small area, compared to what you're doing with your child, what you're doing with your child is much more serious. Mm. Is the seriousness of the compensation in any way correlated with the time delay? Um, no, it's more correlated with uh, who, who or what you're impacting and yep. how many you're impacting uh, yep. of those particular things. So, so obviously if you kill thousands of animals uh, or involved in killing of thousands of animals, that has a higher compensatory effect than uh, in terms of a compensation in a, in a, in a, a corrective way mm -hmm. than uh, killing one animal. Yeah. And uh, or accidentally killing an animal, that would be even less again. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it really does depend on what who what the target is. You know, whether it's in part of the environment or whether it's also people. Because from God's perspective, people are the highest of His creation. The soul is the highest of His creation. So, therefore, anything that has a negative effect on the highest of His creation, obviously has the highest amount of compensation mm -hmm. and uh, in terms of correction. And anything that has the highest amount of positive effect on his creation has the highest amount of compensation in a positive direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, got you. Yeah. So you've established that the time delay between reaping all of what we've sown or seeing the compensatory effects of all what we've sown on Earth is the, it's the longest time delay. Yes. And what struck me when you were talking about that is how much um, we, if we want to engage with something good, for example, the quality of patience is is really um, a part of that, isn't it? Or patience. It, it, well, there's an, uh, if you wanted to examine the qualities that we require, if we look at our, you know, doing loving things on the earth. There's going to be a number of quite big qualities that we need to develop if we're truly going to understand how we're working in harmony with the laws of compensation, for example. Yeah. And these qualities include courage. Yep. Like you need to have courage to to do the right thing in an environment where that, that is really geared towards doing the wrong thing in many cases. You need to have persistence and patience. Mm -hmm. So persistence in the sense of you need to do it, replicate it over and over again. You can't just give up at the mo at a moment's notice and patience in the sense that you, you need to realize that it might take time for the outcome to develop particularly yeah. if the outcome intended is good yes. because that's where people have the most resistance and particularly if you're trying to influence people in a good way because people have more resistance than the environment does yeah. and so you know obviously you're going to have to be very patient there and very uh, kind and compassionate to the process as well then there's other other emotions like faith, mm -hmm. having faith that, that a good outcome is possible, even though the world itself is displaying that uh, maybe, you know, they don't believe a good outcome is possible. Mm -hmm. There is so much uh, negativity on the planet. And unfortunately, because of all the negativity, we, we have a very, very strong concept that oh, everything that's good is going to fail eventually because yeah. that's human nature we call it C cynicism, cynicism really in yeah. place of faith don't we that's yeah. right yeah or cynicism. faith in the negative outcome yeah and yeah. doubt you yeah. know these kind of uh, negative emotions that will will need to be uprooted and get, gotten rid of out <laughs> yeah. of the soul if you're truly going to do good things on the planet you need to stand fast to your faith in God's goodness and stand mm -hmm. fast to the faith that you have that if you do good things that eventually there will be positive outcomes mm -hmm. even if those outcomes are many hundreds or thousands of years after your own death. Mm. Um, so this is where it take, there's a, there is a, a large number of qualities really if you're going to do loving things on the planet. There's a large number of qualities that you're going to need to develop and have a very strong a sense of inside of yourself in order to carry out good deeds or loving deeds while mm. you're on earth. Mm. And this, you mentioned um, courage and patience. And to me, those two are um, directly correlated with my humility. You know, the level of my patience is directly correlated with the level of my humility, equally with courage and perhaps with all the qualities you mentioned. Yeah, then. possibly. Uh, I think all the qualities, you know, that you need to develop are all going to come about. If you if you engage loving desire on Earth, yeah. sooner or later, you, you will see how um, 
much short temper you have, how much impatience you have, how much lack of courage you have, how much fear you how have, much adjusted, addiction you have, how much addiction you have, outcomes. and so forth and so forth. So yeah. you don't really need to worry about dealing with all these <laughs> negative emotions. Because the reality is they're going to come up naturally as you uh, do the good thing, as you decide to do the good thing. And this is why embracing desire is so crucial, isn't it? Yes. And uh, that's my experience. I try to work on all the negative things, but as soon as I engage with desire from a heart perspective, yeah. well, all the other things start happening. Anyways. They start happening and I start realizing that all that messing around with all that negative stuff, well, yeah. it didn't really do that much really. No, that's right. So it's really important in this, uh, in the, in, when we're discussing compensation to understand that there are so many qualities, if we truly understand it, there are so many qualities we're going to be able to develop that God wants us to develop mm -hmm. as a part of our, uh, uh, he wants it to become a part of our character. Yeah. Remember, God gave us our personality and nature, yeah. but our character is something that we are responsible for developing and, mm -hmm. and growing. And on earth, it is difficult to develop character, but there's a benefit to being it being difficult. And that is, once you, if you develop character on earth, you're going to find it very, very easy to continue that development of character in the spirit world mm -hmm. after you've passed. But if you don't develop any character on earth, you're going to pass over with lots of compensatory effects that are all going to be correcting you. On, and on top of that, you will find it very difficult to work through them because you have no character development yeah. in order to work through them. Yeah. So, so, you know, there's a huge amount of benefits for engaging loving behavior on earth, no matter how difficult, no matter how hard, no matter how much opposition you get. Mm -hmm. And there's a huge benefit for doing those things while on earth rather than waiting to some future time. Mm. Mm. That probably leads us to our next point very neatly, which I didn't realize until I looked down at our paper now. So. Yeah. God's purpose in allowing a time delay between sowing and reaping. Mm. So what is the purpose or significance when there is a time delay between our deeds and the compens and our thoughts and feelings and the compensation that that comes as a result of our condition? Yeah, so if we examine uh, God, God has provided this, you could call it a very merciful system, uh, it, particularly when we're in our infancy. And, mm -hmm. and our earth life, our entire earth life is our infancy. So no matter where, from, from God's perspective, if, if you're 90 and still alive on earth, you're still in your infancy. Yeah. You're still a baby <laughs> from his perspective. You've still got many things to learn. Yep. And, and so we need to see the entire earth life as the infancy of our life. Now, now, it's unfair to place upon an infant a requirement that is placed upon an adult in the sense that it's unfair to require, require that the infant uh, understands things uh, that, that, you know, is going to take time and development to understand. Yeah. And it's, it's a bit like if, if a person, uh, imagine if we had a child, like a baby, just newborn, a couple of years old, it's now starting to speak and we shove it in university. Like it's not, it's not the environment for the child. It's mm -hmm. not it's going failing to, every exam. <laughs> it's not going yeah. to be able to function, and yeah. it's not going to be able to even probably enjoy the whole process of a university at that age. Mm. And if you start talking to the child, the two-year-old child, about sexual matters, for example, something that it hasn't even begun its own development of, yeah. you can see that you know by the time it's the child's in their teenagers, maybe that makes some sense, but mm -hmm. or, or a bit earlier than the teenagers, just to prepare them a bit. But when they're a tiny child like that, they've got no concept of what that all means and what, you know what what's going on there and what the process is and what the purpose of that is or anything like that. It's something that the child needs to learn through experience. Mm -hmm. So God's provided the earth life for uh, to be a to be a place, and and he's in, God's original intention, obviously, was that it would be a gentle place, uh, full of mercy and understanding, yeah. Yeah. the ability to make mistakes, yeah. and he provided that place so that we could have this beautiful way of growing and learning. Mm. The only problem is humans have thoroughly destroyed that whole mm. concept by mm -hmm. their own actions and their own Im impressions and desires and addictions and sins, yeah. they have now made the earth life quite uncomfortable for any child yeah. uh, and therefore uncomfortable for all adults as well yeah. because of all the demands that are placed upon uh, the growth process. Mm -hmm. But if you think about God's purpose, he, he's, God's purpose is let's make this earth life as gentle and as uh, patient as 
and merciful as it possibly can be given the fact that each new per each person who's on this planet is a person in their first incarnation only mm -hmm. and therefore is a person who's just going through a process of learning yeah and and it's a beautiful thing to do to provide that and and so in harmony with that provision there needs to be time delay between mm -hmm. what we saw and what we need to see that things take time to grow yeah and we need to understand that you know and like i already given the illustration of sowing a wheat seed it takes a few months three months maybe to grow to a full crop that you can harvest mm -hmm. and in that process we also see we can plant a you know a fruit tree and that might take you know three to ten years to grow before it fruits and so forth and and obviously it does if it is affected by the environment and we through that through the process of planting a physical thing like mm -hmm. a seed and seeing its harvest like mm -hmm. a head of wheat or 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 a fruit tree that has fruit on it in between that time we learn a lot and in that process we see oh i sowed that little seed and look what it became and I, it took time for that little seed to become that and I see also that if I fed it properly and watered it properly and so forth, that helped its growth and so forth. And if I cared for it, if I loved it and, and cared for it, it helped, my, helped its growth. So do you feel there in that example, as an analogy, God is attempting to help us understand that development is a is an eternal part of our existence. Yes, and a gradual process. Yes, it's not it's something change that change is constant. That's right. Yeah. Not something that can be instantly engaged. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of spiritual concepts nowadays that there's an instant fix to something, and that's mm -hmm. not the case at all. All growth, including spiritual growth, growth in love, is going to be gradual. Mm -hmm. It cannot be instant. By definition, it cannot be instant. There's things. Uh, that we need as a foundation before new things can be understood yeah. and that applies to every area or avenue of learning yeah. like it, whether it's technical environmental political or any other thing that whether it's something man created or something god created even learning is always going to have a gradual process where you develop a foundation mm. and then you build on this foundation until you've got the full building and even then buildings can be bigger and larger and better and different uh, so you've got this full scope of of different things that you can discover right and and so god designed the process on earth to be this way and in building in he built into that process this compensatory effect where we can see the time lag between what we sow and what we reap so that we understand that we've got to be quite considered when we sow yeah because we won't see the results instantly, but in 10 years time, it might turn out that it's not very good. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I choose in the natural state, if I get an environment that's nice and pristine, and then I introduce species to it, mm -hmm. right at the beginning, I might not see the effect of introduction of those new species, right? Mm -hmm. But in the long term, I, I've, got, I've got to remember when I do it right at the beginning, there might be long-term quite bad consequences through the introduction of this species if I'm not careful. And I notice that a lot in yourself. Whenever we're creating something new, a new system, a new even a new presentation, but from everything from a micro scale to a macro scale in our life, you are always considering what is the basis of this creation because the foundation of the creation has it's going to affect the building of the creation and every aspect of what we create has a compensatory effect. Yes. And uh, I know people around us sometimes get quite impatient with how slow we, seemingly slow we are to commence or start a project or cre get something going. But that's because there's a lot of consideration in our life, isn't there, mm -hmm. about like what is the impact of everything that we're doing and what is the basis and are we right on this basis? and because of this consideration hmm. just like you're speaking about the seed that you have to consider what you're sowing because it's going to be a big tree one day mm -hmm. potentially mm -hmm. or it won't be if you put it in the wrong environment or, mm. or whatever and so how how is it all going to come about yeah you've got to understand the laws uh, of mm -hmm. compensation really um not only on the soul but also the laws of cause and effect on on the on the environment around you and what is your intention is mm -hmm. is your intention driven to avoid something or fear is it because of fear of something or is it because of control mm -hmm. any of these intentions in your environment is going to have terrible detrimental effect in the long term not only yeah. to the environment but also upon your soul because you're destroying the environment without consideration yes. and so 
what we've got to see is that God provided this way of, okay, we, we've got some examples, you know, in the physical world, we've got some examples of sowing and reaping. And this, what this does is help us also understand that, and we can apply it to bigger issues, for example, soul-based or, or spiritual-based principles. Mm -hmm. Emotions we can apply it to as well, that if you sow some emotion out there in the world, then that's going to have a flow-on effect. And you see this a lot in religious faiths, how, you know, this is another example uh, that's probably worth, we, that we could probably treat as a standalone example, because it's like in a religious faith, uh, around the world today, there's a lot of uh, sort of leaders of religion that make suggestions to the people who are following them. Mm -hmm. And frequently those suggestions are out of harmony with love. So the suggestion might be, well, let's go on a crusade, you know, in the, in the, in the dark ages that was frequent, you know, let's go on a crusade. Convert everyone. Convert everybody yep. by force. And if they don't convert, we murder them. You know, that, that, that crusade begun in somebody's head, mm. you know, as a thought, it got explained. It, it obviously developed enough passion inside of the people involved and they had enough emotional injuries already to say, yes, this is a good thing when it's a terrible thing, obviously. And, and off they go and do it, uh, which, which results in the trauma and suffering, rape and pillaging of millions of people. And, and you know, obviously terrible outcomes yeah. obviously going to be there. Now, if, if the original person decided, well, you know, this thought, that's a pretty bad thought. I better do something about this thought before I even mention it to anybody. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then it would have possibly never have taken off, right, mm. as a concept or an idea. Which is boggling. Like, that's fairly serious, isn't it? Very much so. So you can see that many of these religious leaders who seed thoughts into people's minds yeah. and then say they're not responsible for the outcome, God's going to make them responsible for the yeah. outcome yeah. because they are a part of the creation of the outcome. Not the full part, because obviously for a person to engage that kind of behavior, there has to also be some quiet negative feelings in their soul already from other situations. Yes. And we've spoken at other times about the way that leaders become leaders uh, is by meeting the the addictive desires of the people they are leading. That's right. So who's leading who in a lot of cases? True. And this yeah. is where a society, uh, this is where parents, get, get, you know, you can see the, comp pardon me, the compensatory effect for parents is quite high. Yeah. Can, you can see that they have laid a groundwork of a, an emotional condition, if you like, a framework or a foundation in the child mm. that causes that child then to believe that they are either superior religion, superior race, superior gender, yeah. or whatever it is that they feel superior with, which then enables them to become abusers of those that they feel are inferior. Mm. And these kind of, uh, you know, teachings that are promulgated from the parent to the child, mm. uh, obviously very, very dangerous and damaging, and also then allow societies to control children en masse mm. when they become adults. And cause people to join certain faiths or religions. and Yeah, or political uh, structures. Or, affiliations. Yeah, yeah, they have affiliations that, you know, turn out to be violent potentially. And, you know, if you look at most religious faiths on the earth, there's very few that are peaceful. Mm. You know, there's one or two Christian faiths that are actually peaceful who refuse to go to war under any circumstances. There's a few other faiths that refuse to go to war under any circumstances. But it is a rarity on the planet to see a religious faith that doesn't, uh, ha that, that has inside of its tenets yes. that no, no, you shouldn't kill anybody. Yeah. Right. And it's a rarity to, to see the equality of gender in religious face for Absolutely. similar reasons. Yeah. And all of these problems came from somebody's mind, yeah. from yeah. somebody's thoughts and somebody's ideas and concepts, which they then were able to seed. Mm -hmm. And because the ground was fertile, yeah. these seeds grew into terrible uh, terror-based crops yes. that have terrified the world since. Yeah. And, and these kind of things need to be removed. And the law of compensation is the thing that's going to do that unless we engage other processes such as forgiveness and repentance voluntarily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is also why divine truth is, it, the ground is not really yet fertile for divine truth, is it in, in the sense that it doesn't meet anyone's familial paradigm? 
it's perhaps fertile in that people have a natural inclination for truth whether they like it or not or yeah what do you it think? depends on again you, you, uh, an illustration i've given in the past is is that you know you can't go to a war and get people to think about love because they're heavily engaged in the war already mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it's very very hard to stop them uh engage being engaged in the war when uh, when they're already engaged yeah. the ground in that location is not fertile for the new concept mm -hmm. to change their mind and it's very hard to give concepts of truth to people who are starving because the very first thing they need to do is deal with the fact that they're starving to death yeah and and that's an issue of survival and that needs to be addressed and and so uh, truth can only be shared with people whose hearts are already been pre conditioned if you like to accept it mm. and and unfortunately at this stage there's not a lot of preconditioning that's happening on the planet but there has been millennia of conditioning through the law mm. that has occurred so so god has do, is doing this work to try to precondition the planet for for there to be truth on the planet and and has been doing that for centuries and millennia and the key and I, and I do feel that now is the time when people are going to start taking notice because the turmoil in the world is quite um you know obvious yeah and also communication is quite obvious as well you know we can we can know what's going on in the rest of the world for perhaps the first time in human history mm. in this modern age you know, the last few thousand years. Mm. yeah so this helps us to have a much stronger response and a much a more quick response to the the uh, events that are going on and mm -hmm. therefore much higher potential consideration of those events in terms of how they may affect our day-to-day -day life yeah so i feel that in that regard the world is much more primed uh -huh. to receive god's truth but again it's going to depend on people getting themselves into a receptive condition yeah and that is a personal process mm. we can't blame anybody else for that or or and we can't make anybody else do that for us. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I suppose, as you said, compensation is doing some of that work. Yes, so yeah. got, you know, God, God is treating each one of his children individually. Mm. And as such, each child now is getting helped individually to develop a, an open, receptive heart so that, so that they will turn to, to, at least turn to love, if yeah. not turn to God and God's love. Yeah. Um, that's what God is always attempting to do. And sooner or later, it will be accomplished because God's got a lot more time on his hands than, <laughs> than we have on ours, yes. particularly, you know, in the yeah. earth experience. So sooner or later, we're going to start responding to that yeah. by, by, by nature. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's go back to, um, I've just got a little list here of things that we summarized in terms of some of the mercy the mercy that god is displaying in having a time delay between sowing and reaping mm. so so the first thing we said is that we it actually allows us to develop a stronger connection with our conscience mm. and to develop our will in harmony with our conscience mm. before we see or experience the physical effects of our actions mm. And I, I was thinking of an example of this, but you go ahead, you're about to say something. Well, we're going to talk a lot about the conscience later, so we, so we probably don't want to spend too much time on it because because we haven't yet explained to people what the conscience is <laughs> in, very, in very much detail. So, And that's what we'll be doing in another few sessions away from this one. Yeah. We'll be explaining how the conscience is involved in the process of compensation and the process of forgiveness and repentance. Yeah. But uh, you're right, the conscience does have a huge effect on you know and and it needs time to develop you know you're not going to develop your conscience if you don't see the effects of what you've done and and that's the underlying principle we need to see the effects of mm -hmm. what we've done before our conscience will go oh i, I didn't i didn't think that was going to happen yeah yeah <laughs> and, and i didn't I, I can see that that's not a very good outcome <laughs> so i want to change that yes mm. yeah uh, a time delay on earth allows us to attempt to correct our behavior that is out of harmony with love before being forced into a state of correction. Mm. So compensation actually rewards self-correction. Yes. And perhaps my example actually fits here better. Mm -hmm. um, so we know of a couple of people who uh, in their past have broken the law mm -hmm. um, with 
reasonably serious offences, jail, jailable offences. Mm -hmm. um, they've heard divine truth. They've recognised uh, that behaviour wasn't loving and they've made, they've taken actions to self-correct their, not only their behaviour, but also make amends with authorities mm -hmm. and have actually, so if, and th there's been an excellent outcome for mm -hmm. everyone involved, mm -hmm. um, but if compensation was applied immediately, uh, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have allowed for this process for the person to develop their own loving desire, would it? No, but it, I, I feel, I feel though it. with this particular example, we need to sort of take it a bit further. You yep. see, for most of these people, they were very concerned about the fact they'd broken the law and they felt guilty about the fact <laughs> yes. they'd broken the law. Yes, we were but, talking about but, this. Yep. but they were feeling more guilty about the fact they'd broken man's law than about breaking God's law. Yes. <laughs> and, and this is where I see it very tricky, this little part, because because we often start to feel guilty about the fact we broke man's law, like that we stole or that we, you know, took, you know, did drugs or, or distributed drugs or, you know, that we might have done. There might, in one case I know, who didn't work out because he didn't properly confess, you know, there was some uh, child uh, abuse child involved abuse, and so yeah. forth. And we've advised him to confess, but no, he hasn't confessed to everything, you know, so the outcome is still not resolved there. But in every single one of the cases, whether they had a good outcome or not, mm -hmm. right, and the ones who haven't is uh, because they weren't repented at all, yes. and they still haven't gone through the process of repentance with God about the issue. Yes. They, so they don't see how they've broken God's laws. So compensation will still be... So this is a good question. Obviously, they've refined their will in some way more to be more in harmony with the law because yes. they're no longer engaging with the unlawful activities. Actions, yes. Um, however... And they've obviously reformed themselves in, in the sense that they no longer have a desire to do, to do these things. things. They're not dealing with a compulsion So that's to do a part them. of the process of, of repentance in, a, in, in dealing with things. Yes, or a refinement of the will. We, can we call that repentance? Well, it's even? part of repentance in that you're right. changing your underlying reason for why yes. you chose to do it. Whereas the person, we can't include everyone that you've just listed there in, this, in that process because some of them haven't, but those Correct. who have... Yep. Um, so they have received some compensatory benefit, we could say, because that has changed. Yes. But the point you're drawing is because they haven't actually righted themselves from a soul perspective with God's feelings on the matter and the way well, they're with God's laws, breaking God's laws, yep. yes, then there will be a continuation of compensation to assist them with that. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And, and, and time delay, like you said, said in your original question there, certainly uh, has an effect on helping them come to the conclusion yep. that that is not yet finished yeah. because they still feel the consequences of some of that action, those feelings and actions that they've taken and eventually those consequences will be displayed to them and then they'll realise, oh, that particular thing, I thought it was finished, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so yes. God will show you when it's finished by the fact that you have no more compensatory effects <laughs> of, the, of, yeah. of what the original action was. And some of these people have a lot of compensatory effects that they are still ignoring. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, but the time delay helps us to see how our sinful behaviour has long-term negative effects mm. and how our loving behaviour has positive benefits to everyone involved. That's right. And everyone affected. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, and it's a bit harder, as we've already mentioned, uh, it's a bit harder to see when we do good things, mm -hmm. the positive benefits to that. Um, but uh, it's probably harder to see it in the environment, but it's not harder to see it in our immediate environment. Usually... When we do good things, our immediate environment it does markedly improve. Mm. And when you say immediate environment, you mean your day-to-day -day Your day-to-day -day life, life, your family life, you know, yeah. you become more loving as a husband or, mm -hmm. or, or a wife. Uh, you become more loving to your children. You become more consistent and truthful with each other. Yep. These things have immediate benefits in your family that you notice uh, yeah. the benefits of immediately. And while the rest of the world may not respond to them very well, your family, you will notice family life is happier, more content, less arguments and so forth. Yes. Less anger, rage and so forth. And and these things demonstrate that the loving the loving actions, yeah. that you can have faith in them and they'll always bring about positive rewards. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Mm.